Well, hello and good afternoon, everybody. Time is now a one minute after top of the hour at 2 o'clock Eastern, 11 a.m. Pacific. I'm Tom Gallucci, Vice President of Business Development with the Mortgage Collaborative, and I want to thank everybody for joining T today's TMC Connect TMC web, broadcast web broadcast entitled Power of the Network, What You Need to Know About Implementing eClose. And uh, privilege to have this presentation today moderated by a pair of our preferred partners, a uh, pair of our longest standing preferred partners with DocuTech and lending QB. And we'll also have a pair of uh, discussion leaders as well on the lender side to help support the conversation. So before we kick things off here, a uh, quick shameless plug, I want to remind our attendees as you're filtering in, uh, feel free to check out our TMC Connect and member event calendar pages on the Mortgage Collaborative website, view an upcoming schedule of TMC Connect web broadcasts, and keep checking in as we're going to be continually adding new sessions based off the feedback of our members and our partners. Um, now, for today's call, whether you've dialed in or you're connected via your computer, all lines have been muted for the discussion. And this is done only to avoid any background noise in your area and ensure that all attendees can hear today's presentation clearly. Now, that said, we want these discussions to be as interactive as possible. So I encourage all attendees, any questions that you have throughout, please feel free to submit those through either the chat or Q&A function, and I'll be able to verbalize those on your behalf towards the end of today's discussion. So how do you do that? Well, if you're connected via Zoom, you'll see at the bottom of your screen uh, buttons for the chat and Q&A. Pop those up. You can uh, type in your question, and I'll see that on our end. Uh, keep in mind, too, if we do run out of time to address every question, we will go ahead and screenshot those so that we can share those with our discussion leaders after the fact and be able to follow up with any feedback that we have uh, based off those questions and responses. Another layer of interactivity today, we'll also be doing some live polling questions at the beginning of the presentation. And keep in mind, at the end, you will get a short, I believe, two-question survey. So please uh, be very interactive with us. Uh, your survey responses and your polling responses are really going to help drive the overall feedback for the discussion. Uh, as a reminder, today's call is recorded and will be available for playback. Uh, instructions to access copy of the recording as well as copy of the presentation deck will be distributed to all attendees in a follow-up email that you should receive tomorrow. So let's jump right in as far as our discussion leaders for today. So we're a little uh, fun interactivity to kick off this discussion. So first off, I want to introduce uh, panelist Stephen Wang, uh, Director of Business Development with Lending QB. And uh, Stephen brings over 15 years of experience within the mortgage and financial services industries to his role at Meridian Link. Uh, and as a business development director, Stephen works with lenders looking to transition from one LOS to another via consultative approach uh, to ensure that they're planning properly for their future business needs. Uh, our fun fact for Stephen today is that uh, he once made it on Fox Sports South during a Braves game while in Southern California. And uh, immediately after being shown on TV, he received several texts from uh, various managers inquiring why he was at a Braves game, uh, as we like to refer to hashtag busted. <laughs> so, Stephen, great to have you with us today. Thanks for the introduction, Tom. Uh, Just always a pleasure. I uh, also want to introduce our panelists. Emily Shapiro, Chief Revenue Officer with DocuTech, a now first American company. Uh, Emily brings over 20 years of experience within the mortgage and financial services industries to her role at DocuTech. And as Chief Revenue Officer, Emily leads new business development, client implementations, partner integrations, project management office, uh, client success, as well as supporting fulfillment teams. And our fun fact about Emily is that she's incredibly passionate off-road racer. Uh, on the weekends, you can find Emily uh, doing uh, racing trucks uh, around the desert. And I've actually gotten to see a link from a uh, friend, Jamie Modern at DocuTech, some pretty cool stuff. So we may have to share that out afterwards so you can see uh, Emily's side passion. But Emily, great to have you with us today. Thanks. It's great to be here. Excellent. And then uh, also supporting our discussion today, we have a pair of TMC lender member uh, discussion leaders. First off, we have Heather Yee, 
uh, Vice President of Operations with JMAC Lending. And uh, Heather has over 20 years of experience directly within mortgage lending. And in her role as VP of Operations, she works with various parties to maximize operational processes. And our fun fact about Heather is that since starting in the mortgage industry at just 16 years old with a work permit, uh, she's tried to escape multiple times since and feels like a common denominator for many of us, keeps getting pulled back in. So uh, Heather, great to have you with us and uh, really great to see that uh, still surviving within the mortgage industry and uh, more or less thriving. So great to have you with us today. Glad to be here. Hi, everyone. And last, but certainly not least, uh, we have Brian Marr, Senior Vice President of National Branch Operations and Mortgage Technology with Eustis Mortgage. Uh, Brian brings to the table over 21 years, uh, as he refers to it, in the mortgage mafia, starting from uh, the mailroom uh, while he was going to college at night. And uh, Brian's primary role is to make sure that everyone knows how to use mortgage technology uh, to its best efficiency as well as change management to ensure that Eustis is on the cutting edge of mortgage industry changes. And Brian's fun fact is that when uh, I was cutting his teeth in the industry on the uh, software management side back in 2009, in his first two years, he traveled more than 180,000 miles by air. Uh, so much traveling to the point that when he finally came back in the office, his CFO thought that Brian had been fired and in turn had an intern uh, sitting in his office working at his desk computer when he came back. So I got a special kick out of that one. Uh, Brian, great to have you with us and, and thanks for joining in today's discussion. Sure, you bet. Thanks, guys. Excellent. Well, before we dive in here, as I mentioned earlier, we've got a couple polling questions uh, that we love responses from our attendees here. Uh, so, and if you do the honors and pull those up for me. So attendees, you can go in and uh, be able to respond right now to these three questions queued up. Uh, first question being, how vital uh, is e-closing to your origination process with the options being you know, either not yet a priority, a nice to have option, or a strategic imperative? Um, second question being, what is the leading driver of your e-closing consideration? Uh, it could be borrower experience, cost reduction, maximizing loan production, or accelerating cycle time. And last but not least on our polling questions is where are you on the path to e-closing? Uh, are you defining business case? Are you exploring your options? Are you currently in implementation or already actively conducting e-closing? So give a second here for our attendees to respond. Amy, let me know how it's looking as far as the, uh, the responses go. Yep, I was just going to say, but we've got about 34% who have voted. So that's 16 out of 46 that are on the call. Um, so if anybody else wants to hop in and answer these questions, that would be really helpful. Last call, people. We want your feedback. Still sitting at 34. Everyone else is multitasking. <laughs> <laughs> Nobody does that on call. On. <laughs> right? <laughs> well, I'll tell you what, in lieu of time for everyone's yeah, benefit today, why don't we go ahead and display the responses and we'll see uh, what the findings show. All right, there you go. Excellent. So interesting to see on the first question, how vital is e-closing to your origination process? A little over 50% said it's a strategic imperative. Uh, followed by 31% saying a nice to have and the remaining 13% indicating not quite yet a priority. Um, and then on the leading driver of E, closing consideration, not surprising, borrower experience, the top uh, response there with half of the responses, followed by a pretty even mix between cost reduction, maximizing load production, and accelerating cycle times. And then finally, where are you at on your path to E closing? Uh, not surprising here either from my perspective with uh, over 56% saying currently exploring their option. But uh, great to see that 25% currently conducting e-closing. Um, I imagine that number's ticked up quite a bit in the last 12 months, so great to see you there. Well, I want to thank everybody for your responses. 
And on that note, why don't we jump right into today's discussion, and I'm going to turn it over to Stephen uh, to kick things off by reviewing the call agenda and taking it from there. Thanks, Tom. I appreciate it. And it's a shame that we have to do this via webinar. Uh, obviously, I would have loved to have seen everybody and gotten to interact. But unfortunately, we, we had something called COVID come find us and has not yet decided to leave. I think it's starting to overstay its welcome. Um, but having said that, wanted to go ahead and jump in. Uh, I am glad to be here. I'm glad to be on the panelists with Emily, Heather, and Brian. Uh, Going to have a great session ahead of us. And really, I want to highlight DocuTech for a minute just because they've done such a great job through, especially through the COVID times, kind of sharing how the eClose process evolved, um, can, what they're doing to help their clients to, to get to the finish line in that regard, and just really sharing any updates and changes uh, throughout the landscape, which is a huge, huge part of you know, what we do as vendors is providing that value of information and being able to really help our clients succeed in changing times, right? So uh, great job for, to DocuTech. Glad to have them as a partner. Um, today, you know, obviously DocuTech has done a great job of facilitating all of that information to everybody already. Uh, so we're, today we're going to focus a little bit more on the partnership between Lending QB and DocuTech <clears throat> and how easy it is to eclose utilizing that integration in our system. So as you can see, we have our agenda here. Uh, the next 10 minutes or so will be me talking about myself, which is something I like to do quite a bit. So that works nicely. And then obviously Emily talking about uh, DocuTech <clears throat> and then we'll jump into a demo of the integration itself. And then we'll spend some time talking to Heather and Brian discussing their experiences and you know, even some of their challenges of what they've been doing with eClose. And then we'll leave the last few minutes uh, to some Q&A for everybody. Hopefully you guys will have some good questions filtering for us as we go. But having said that, if you're unfamiliar with LendingQB or MeridianLink as a company, uh, I'd like to take a few minutes and just kind of talk about what we do. So LendingQB is a product of MeridianLink. We are a true browser-based SaaS solution. So, you know, for us, it's very little over IT overhead. Uh, and even a step further, uh, it, it provides agility because all you need is a browser and a working internet and you guys can get to work, uh, which, you know, depending on who you ask is maybe a good thing and, or a bad thing, right? Um, as part of that, you know, what, what we like to focus on is the technology side and providing you guys the API uh, to all the various vendors and services out there because there's a ton of them. And, you know, obviously Dogutech being one of the, the good ones that we've got, you know, we, we just, we specialize in making sure that it, it works well for us as well as the vendor. Uh, and then ultimately giving the client the best experience possible, right? Um, throughout today, uh, you know, you're going to see actually very little of Lending QB, which hopefully we'll speak to the quality of that integration because then, you know, the less time you spend with us, uh, the more time you can focus on doing your job, right? And that's, that's what everybody's goal is. And last but not least, you know, we, we do support all three ch channels of business, whether that's retail, wholesale, or correspondent. Um, you know, we support from the first customer interaction with the point of sale all the way down to the e-close side and even some interim servicing, right? So all of that's very critical for you guys uh, as the correspondent lenders out there to focus and do your job and do it well. Um, having said all that, you know, we're, we're an LOS solution that, that can help you take care of your needs. Um, but having, I would like to turn this over to Emily now uh, on the DocuTech side so she can discuss kind of the, the e-closing solution that before we get into the demo. Sure, thanks Stephen. And before we jump into the e-closing solution, I wanted to spend just a couple of minutes on the primary components of the overall DocuTech solution. At DocuTech, we believe that, that uh, having an end-to-end -end seamless and fully integrated solution um, really provides the best experience both for the borrowers, for the lenders, um, and for, for costs and efficiencies. So Conformex, it's our decision and rules and engine. It's the document generation portion of our solution. It ingests data from Lending QB. It generates the documents. It configures the packages and supplies them to our Solex software for delivery. Solex is the component that handles the e-delivery of whether or not you do an e-disclose, an e-sign, or an e-closing session. All of those are handled through our, our Solex solution. It also includes a, a proprietary uh, built DocuTech eVault. And it has full audit log functionality throughout the life cycle of any documents that are generated throughout the, 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 the journey with the, with the borrower. Um, the components are all data driven. They all have dynamic behavior. 
They support all package types through, through the lending life cycle. And they also support a multitude of borrower signer types and scenarios to ensure that you can meet the needs of, of all the borrowers in your portfolio. As for e-closing, our e-closing philosophy is focused in, in making sure that we're accelerating closing. And accelerating closing starts from the first moment that you engage in the origination life cycle. To Stephen's point earlier, starting as soon as you enter the portal and as soon as that borrower enters that application, we're making sure that we are efficiently and quickly driving forward both the generation of accurate and compliant documents, but the delivery of those and return of key data points back to your LOS to ensure that you can optimize your time to closing with a seamless borrower experience. They feel the same thing that they feel in the beginning and see and use the same technologies throughout, which is critical. Uh, having your e-close solution integrated with your doc and LOS vendor directly um, helps to reduce errors and rework as you know, several of the e-close uh, offerings in the industry are componentized, focused on various portions of that cycle, whether that be just the signing experience, just the closing room, uh, just an e-vault, just the RON solution. Um, so having that fully integrated with your doc vendor helps to ensure both you speed the closing because you don't have to take the time to manually tag. The tags are um, native to the documents and passed into the e-closing solution native from your doc vendor and also reduces the, the option for errors in tagging that can occur as well, making sure that, that you have a quick, fast, reduced cost um, and uh, one consistent solution. Another piece of our solution is, is what we call be as easy as you can be. Uh, we have an integrated e-eligibility call in the software that allows you to know whether or not your solution is eligible for, for example, ROM, or if it's eligible for RIN, uh, remote in-person in notary. Um, our e-closing solution, not surprisingly, when you look at the trajectory of the charts, um, our, our e-closing volume really took off with, at the same pace that, that the industry and market growth uh, grew. Um, the MERS e-notes you can see here at the bottom have continued to accelerate. Granted, um, our market intelligence tells us that that's highly centralized, which is a, a couple of lenders, but e-notes um, are growing rapidly in the market. Um, and our e-closing volume has really taken off and you can see a huge increase as the pandemic came on. In fact, we had about 30 lenders come online and go live with e-close in a few short weeks after um, the pand pandemic first uh, hit. We're about 27,000 e-close transactions processed through the software each month. Um, and those are central, or those are, include our bank, independent mortgage banks and credit union clients. A, a lot to know about e-closing. There's a lot of vernacular that's used um, and so just wanted to share a little bit of, of, of a, a visual representation of the types of e-closing that are available. There's the in-person electronic notarization where a borrower would be sitting at a table, but electronically notarizing their docs in front of a notary. There's the one that um, I think that some of us are familiar with having come through or come into play during the pandemic, which is the remote ink signed notarization where through uh, camera technology and authentic authentication technology, um, the borrower would be wet signing over video with a, with a notary. Most commonly known, I think, when you're looking at the full digital landscape is the remote online notarization um, where the full experience is done digitally over camera. And then what's being done mostly in the industry and is really table stakes today is that hybrid signing where they're doing their ancillary documents. So the, the non-collateral documents are those that don't need to be notarized and, pro and perhaps the note if, uh, if the, the e-note is not in scope either by the lender or by the investor. Um, hybrid is really where we're seeing the most volume and in, in, in basically, like I said, kind of the table state stakes game. Um, wanted to talk really quickly about the three legs of RON eligibility. A lot of people talk about RON and with the concepts of what states allow RON. It's not just about states allowing RON. Um, states pass laws that allow their notaries to become remote online notaries. You can still do a RON transaction in a state that does not allow their own, their own notaries to be RON notaries. Um, so what are the three legs of RON eligibility? First, that's marketability. Um, which one of your investors will purchase an e-note from a RON, RON e-closing? Recordability. Will a county record a security instrument that was executed during a RON transaction? And then insurability. Will your title underwriter insure if, the, if it has been executed with RON 
Um, and if it has been executed in RON, as a RON transaction in certain scenarios, such as um, be a, a crossover of state lines where your notary is not in the same state as the signer of the property. So many things to think about. Um, and we have architected a solution and integrated with our partners at, at LendingQB to try to demystify it and make it as easy as possible for you to, uh, to move into the e-closing and ultimately the full digital mortgage space. And we've done that by making sure that it starts with the, the point of sale and the LOS start, uh, includes that document generation. And then every step of the e-closing life cycle that we're about to demonstrate to you a portion of that in a moment is integrated. We call it one contract, one contact. Um, some, <laughs> some other people say one throat to choke, um, but it does include both the closing ceremony, the closing room, the settlement agent access to our partners through Simplifile. We have two options. We have a Simplifile path and a non-Simplifile path. Today, we're gonna to show you um, our integration with Simplifile and the services that the settlement agent um, are, are given access to through that tight integration. Um, it includes e-recording. It includes the pass back of post-closing documents such as the e-recording document, e-recorded security instruments and documents, as well as the upload of the wet sign closing package in a, in a hybrid scenario and the final title policy. Pretty much anything that your title and settlement agent would deliver to you, if they upload it into our solution, it's automatically pushed back um, to, to your lending QB and to your, your doc management system for you to have access to without manual inter interaction. The integrated e-vault, any loan that have, transaction that has an e-note, we do generate our own smart doc e-notes. Those smart doc e-notes would be uh, registered either automatically or manually. They're, that is configurable um, by each lender in our e-vault. Um, and then all of the transactions that you would need to perform inside of an e-vault uh, through the full life cycle of that loan are available in the DocuTech e-vault. We also have an integration with more than one RON vendor. Um, and if you'd like to see a demonstration of our integration with RON vendors or our e-vault, we're happy to follow up with you um, at a later time. So, so please let us know. Um, some best practices, um, you know, there's a lot, been a lot of learning and a lot of really quick learning, making sure you have the pro proper sponsorship, making sure you're measuring and defining success early, making sure that you have communication up, down and outward with all the stakeholders in the process and making sure that you have a clear plan for implementation that limits the off ramps and, and helps the users adopt change. Changing technology in a change of this magnitude is often not the greatest hurdle. It's often the change of the culture and the change of the people because we're really talking about processes that have been in place for decades and decades and decades and getting people to adopt new habits and new technology can be one of the challenges and, and us in LendingQB are happy to, to help you with those learnings along the way. So let's go see a demonstration of the LendingQB DocuTech integrated eClose solution. And while it's getting set up, I'm just going to remind attendees real quick, any questions that you have for our discussion leaders today, feel free to pop them into the chat or Q&A function, and we will address those at the end of the call. Today, we're going to be taking a look at DocuTech's Solex eClose Engage platform and its integration directly with the LendingQB LOS. Uh, so we'll get to see from start to finish what all parties will ultimately interact with and view from the very beginning of an e-close uh, that is a hybrid loan all the way through to the very end. Um, of course, it's going to start here in LQB. Uh, but before I get started, if you do have any questions, uh, this is going to be relatively high level. Uh, please feel free to reach out to us at any time. If you want to get a more in-depth demo, maybe a more customized demo, uh, you can reach us at docutech.com. And up at the top right of the screen, there is a link for requesting a demo. Now, without further ado, the request itself will start out of LQB here. Once your user is ready to generate a final closing package on a document, they would get in at the loan level in LQB, and under services, they would find DocuTech from the list. Once they've clicked on DocuTech, it'll open up a document generation uh, web page or sub window here, uh, where they'll choose the package type that they want to generate. Uh, don't feel limited by the package types you see here. They are configurable. For us, of course, we're going to choose closing. The loan program will automatically come in and they will run an audit. The audit will either return errors or warnings, depending on what we see uh, as data in the transaction and what looks off. Um, those warnings and uh, errors are configurable as well. 
Uh, if you wanted to change potentially what we're looking for, we do have that flexibility. Ultimately, an error is going to prevent a user from moving forward to the document set itself until that error is fixed, which they would fix within the LOS directly. Uh, and a warning will let them go ahead and move forward, but it's still going to notify them of something that looks off. Now, once your user receives only warnings or everything is free and clear, they can go ahead and hit next, which will bring them into the electronic delivery portion of the document generation screen. If they wanted to preview the documents at this time, they could. And once they're ready to go ahead and generate that final closing package and send it out to the signers, they would choose send e disclosures. Of course, they would choose hybrid e close. And if they wanted to notify any additional agents, they could go ahead and do that at this time before hitting create documents to generate that package. Now, once they hit create documents, a plethora of things are going to happen behind the scenes. Um, namely, the platform is going to grab the information directly from LQV. It's going to encrypt it and send it to our document generation platform, which will then build the document package intelligently as it's needed. This means it's going to automatically add in program investor um, custom documents you may need to add, any documents that are needed as part of this package, we will see information from the payload and automatically add in those documents as necessary. Once the package is built, we will also deliver it to all signers or settlement agents or notaries that may need to interact with the documents themselves. This will all happen simultaneously in a matter of seconds. And your user here uh, would see uh, confirmation mid-screen down here once the transaction has been successfully created and everything has been sent. Once they receive that confirmation message, they're done. There's nothing else that needs to come through uh, or that they need to do on their end. Um, all of the rest of the information, disclosure tracking, copies of the documents, the fully signed package, all of that will automatically come back into LQB as it happens in real time and as we have that information. So that's the request. It's uh, pretty uh, easy and simple, or it's as easy or simple as we could have made it. Uh, from your borrower's perspective, they're going to go ahead and receive an email uh, directly from the Solex platform, which is our eSign platform, after uh, the document generation is successful. So there's no delay there. Um, but everything about this email can and typically will change because we want this to look and feel like it is coming from you and not from us. We will introduce branding elements. We'll change what it says. We can change who it's coming from. We can even change the email address to match what you would expect. The important portion here is that it's going to articulate to the user that they can now start reviewing the package and that it's in their best interest to do so. And it's going to give them a link into the eSign platform directly where they will actually be doing the interactions. Again, the same premise applies to the eSign platform. We want this to look and feel like it is the lender and you, not us. So we would replace the Solex logo up here at the top left with your logo. We'd change the color and the branding scheme. We can even change things like font to match what a user would expect to see coming to your website. Uh, obviously, they would not normally see a warning here. I am in a staging environment for my demo environment here, which is why I do get this warning. Normally, a user would not see that. They would only see the sign-in section down here, of which um, in order to sign into the platform and authenticate, we would typically ask them authentication questions like last name and last four of their social security number. What we ask them is configurable. So ultimately, you would define what you'd want to ask them here. And once we uh, get the answers from the borrower, we would authenticate them into the platform. If you wanted to do more complex authentication methods like dual factor authentication, we can also do more complex methods like that. And the entire eSign platform you're getting ready to see is also able to be embedded within point of sales or portals that you may want. Now, once they are authenticated into the platform, they will see a workflow up here at the top center of the steps that we're anticipating them to take. Uh, most of these uh, steps can be changed by configuration options on your end or on our end. Uh, so if at any point in time you think you want this to function a little bit differently, chances are it's very easy for us to do so. Uh, every step of this process and is very, very configurable. Uh, generally, we're going to start with consent and ask them for electronic consent, unless you've asked them previously and don't want to ask them again. If we do ask them for consent, we do need them to accept before we show them anything else electronic. Uh, after they accept consent, we mo will move them forward into the review section where we'll show them the entirety of the closing package from start to finish and let them read through the document package one by one. They can do this in a number of different ways. With PDF controls up here, with scrolling through their mouse wheel, if they want a touchscreen device, they could use their finger to scroll up or down. 
Uh, there's also a menu over here that will keep pace with them as they scroll from document to document. And it's also going to color code everything. So documents they haven't had a chance to review are going to be yellow and documents that they have reviewed change to green. Uh, in the review section, uh, we are looking for them to finish reviewing all of the documents here. Uh, it does give the documents to the borrower ahead of time. So the borrower has the opportunity to get in and start reviewing these documents even before their day of closing. Uh, in my case, I'm actually closing on uh, August 24th. Uh, today it is the 21st for me, so this is a date in the future. And despite it being in the future, I can still get in, I can still see all the documents, and if I had any questions, comments, or concerns, I could get those alleviated before my day of closing. Now what the platform will do by default is what we call preview functionality, where it will give the documents to the borrower ahead of time, but it doesn't let them sign anything until their day of closing. We can see this as I get down to the bottom of the review section, it's going to prevent me from moving forward until their day of closing, which is on the 24th. And on their day of closing, of course, it'll send them a reminder email and let them to get in and start signing, which I'll show you in just a moment. Uh, importantly here, uh, that is just one of our configuration options. So if you wanted it to handle uh, the signing in a different manner, uh, we can. We do default the preview functionality for most of our clients uh, because we found that certain investors within the U.S. don't particularly like when ancillary documents are signed and dated with a different date than the notarizable documents. So to alleviate concern, uh, it'll go ahead and prevent them from moving forward until their day of closing. Then it will send that reminder email to them. It'll let them get back into the platform. It'll remember everything that they've done in prior sessions, and it will go ahead and let them continue forward from there. Uh, the signing section has the same controls in the same location, so very easy for the user to see and interact with any of these uh, interaction points that they may need to interact with. If you want to give them the creation, uh, the ability to create their own signature, you can. Uh, otherwise, we'll default a signature for them and they won't have that selection. And then the rest of the signing process is pretty self-explanatory, basically allowing them to interact with the documents in any manner that they may need be. Now they can do this on any device that they may want to utilize, including a phone or a tablet. It'll automatically optimize for whatever device they want. And everything about this process of what they can do ahead of time is entirely optional. So it's not required of them to complete anything ahead of time should they not have the time. Not only will the settlement agent be able to see what they did, the settlement agent will also be able to help them finish at closing should that be necessary. Now speaking of settlement agent, they will get their own separate email immediately after document generation. This email is going to come from the Simplify platform. Uh, and in the Simplify email, it'll get them two different ways to get into the platform, either signing in as a guest where they answer their own authentication questions or by logging in directly to Simplify using a account that they previously set up. Once they're in the platform, it will show them everything about this transaction that they may need to see and it will update in real time as events occur, whether that be events that have happened on the borrower's end or on the lender's end or on their end. Everything will always update to keep them appraised of what's happening. Now, once they're in the platform, it will walk them through step by step what's needed. Uh, so it'll help them download the ink sign documents, return them back in after the signing is completed. And as I mentioned before, if the borrower still needs to do any electronic signing at closing, it will also allow them to launch an e-sign session from their device to help the borrower finish uh, if needed. So that's a very high level of everything that happens in a e-close hybrid situation uh, on e Docutex Solex uh, Engage platform with LQB. If you'd like to see a more in-depth demo, maybe a little bit greater detail and ask specific questions from your end, please feel free to reach out to us at docutech.com and hit that request a demo button. Hope you have a great day. Thank you everybody for, for going through the demo with us. Um, in the interest of time, we, we didn't include the eVault and a RON session. Um, if you'd like to see a demonstration of those two portions of the functionality, please go ahead and reach out. Thanks, Emily. I appreciate it. Um, I know I'm sure that was filled with such great information for everybody that's on the webinar. Um, but I'd like to transition over to uh, Brian and, and Heather over uh, obviously, Brian with Eustace Mortgage and Heather with JMAC Lending for their personal experiences uh, utilizing actually both of our platforms. So, Brian, I'm going to start with you if you don't mind. Uh, you're, you're in the beginning stages of getting DocuTech uh, integrated for the eClose with the Lending QB. Can you tell us kind of what's happening in your business that drove you to that decision? Uh, sure. 
obviously with the current interest rates, you know, pipelines are full. So that, and, and people not wanting to go in to title companies, that was definitely one of the, the decision-making. But we, we started this back before, um, we're just gonna say the lower interest rates. Um, so, but what, what sparked that is really the borrower experience and also our, our partner experience as well, whether it's the uh, real estate agents or the title companies, just a lot easier uh, ease to close that transaction. So we can look at everything across the board and uh, told sales to say, hey, put the, put the pedal to the metal. We're gonna you know, increase the units, but we're not, we're gonna use this technology to be able to um, still maintain that higher increase of units, but not add any additional uh, employment if, if at all possible. Yeah, that's great points. Uh, I'm, and I'm sure that's that's helped you guys significantly, especially as we've continued to, to kind of react to what we're seeing in, in um, the tam- pandemic land stage, or landscape, right? Um, well, thank you for that explanation. Can you kind of tell us, you know, how the process has been um, getting it set up and getting it implemented between the two? Uh, sure, yeah, it's, it's very good. It's very hands-on uh, with DocuTech. Um, we are, I'll say, we're a little bit probably more high maintenance than some other lenders. Uh, we run five different channels or six different channels of business um, with six different or five different logos, uh, one channel being both retail and TPO. So, uh, and, and we look at everything, it's very customizable. Uh, like you saw on the demo that Robert was showing, everything is, is going to point that we want is going to point back to the loan officer or the company themselves and brand the loan officer and the company itself. Um, and you know, that's, that's really what uh, a lot of our focus has been on. Um, it's just that, that customized and that the branding that the DocuTech does offer. Awesome. Awesome. Uh, yeah. And that, that did seem to be a kind of a, a focal point of mm-hmm. making sure it fits with what your business model is. Right. And yes. making sure you're successful. Um, so, you know, obviously there's no, perfect implementation, right? There's only as, as good as you can make it. So certainly there had to be a couple of challenges along the way in, in terms of kind of getting it in place and up and running. So can you talk a little bit about some of those things that you saw? Oh, uh, sure. Uh, being primarily in Texas, uh, our corporate office is in New Orleans, um, does lending in Texas, but we have a satellite office here in Texas as well. Um, we do a little bit things uh, things different in Texas when it comes to refinances. Uh, if you lend in Texas, we've got an A6, we've got an A4. Some people call it A4 and F2. Uh, it's very confusing whether or not it's a refi, a cash out, you know, converting it back from a cash out to a regular refi. Um, so that customization and making sure that those documents go out as long as we have triggered something uh, in lending QB, that that probably was our largest um, challenge, and then making sure that those new customized documents um, just get barcoded and get separated out. Uh, we might be a little bit different than other lenders as well. We want every single document itemized out inside of the EDOC folder for lending QB. Uh, my understanding, a lot of them just want one attachment. Um, but again, I think the, the biggest challenge was just getting those Texas documents uh, in the right spot, going out with the right transaction, uh, because whether it's initial disclosures or closing disclosures, whether again it's the A6, the A4, um, those have different um, closing documents and regulations as well. Um, and it's just basically making sure that lending QB and uh, whenever we put it correctly in lending QB, that it's sent to DocuTech correctly with the correct documents to go out. Perfect. We, and we uh, did get through that. We did get through that. It was yeah. a, lot of, a lot of back and forth and a lot of talking about how it works. So it's good. It's, it's good. That's awesome. That's that's really good to hear. Glad to see that it is working the way uh, you kind of anticipated to. So, you know, I'd like to piggyback off that last question a little bit. And how are your customers on the consumer side? How are they feeling about it? You know, obviously that's a pretty big transition from going into a title company, sitting down and, you know, signing all these docs. How, you know, what's been the adoption rate and, you know, how have they felt about it? Um, good. Uh, we, you know, we've got our largest branch on it right now. Um, so we're not completely rolled out, but we've got a pretty good adoption rate in the DFW Metroplex. Uh, we kind of give the, the choose your own adventure um, path for our borrowers. If you're a borrower that wants to sit down in front of you, in front of someone and with an ink pen and just have a conversation, a cup of coffee, we allow that. Uh, or if they want to do it, you know, the full hybrid, 
and doing their pajamas the morning of and, and drive in <laughs> and, and doing the parking lot with a tablet through the window. We allow either way, uh, but the, with the, the partners really appreciate both uh, because again, they can, they can crank out more units. And that's what we're yep. looking to do is increase the business, uh, crank out more units with as little as possible, adding additional employment or overhead. And we've been able to do that. Awesome. That's, that's fantastic to hear. And like, I'm sure hopefully that gives everybody else hope who's looking to, to get into this, that this can be done. It's, it's not as daunting as it may seem. Um, so we're going to transition over to Heather, if you don't mind. Heather, thanks again for joining us and being a part of this panel. Uh, great to have you here. You've been on the e DocuTech e-closing integration with LendingQB for how long now? Um, we started back in April of this year, so about uh, four months now. Wonderful. And so as part of that, can you kind of tell us about your experience and the things that you saw, the things that, um, that you're experiencing? And if you don't mind, if you can also share what channels of business you're, you're utilizing uh, the e-close in. Uh, well, you know, we are a multi-channel lender, but most of our business is wholesale. And so our, our main purpose of moving to e-close is, you know, we, we definitely wanted to um, improve the closing experience for our clients and also improve operational workflows. Um, I think we mentioned that, you know, earlier um, in, in this meeting where, you know, it's for convenience, accuracy, speed. Um, is also equal friendly. So we wanted to really uh, take advantage of that. Um, since we are a multi-channel lender, um, some of the challenges that you know, we faced was you know, dealing with a lot of different types of settlement agents, which might not be, um, might not kind of understand um, or follow instructions with the e-close um, with the e-close platform, but um, so far it's been working out pretty pretty well and a lot of our clients enjoy it. Awesome, that's really good to hear. And you know, that's, you know, my background does not include a, a ton of wholesale. So I would have never even imagined what those kind of hurdles that you would have enc encountered on the wholesale side could have been. So those are certainly invaluable comments. Um, you know, if looking back at it now, having been in it for four months now, kind of what are the things that you would tell yourself four months ago and what are the things that you wish you kind of had better prepared, better planned, or even just things that you couldn't have properly pre prepared for? What are some of those type of things that showed up? I think <laughs> that we were, I think that we were really eager to move, um, you know, to e-close because of, you know, obviously we want to make the bar experience better, but we were really eager to move because of the whole pandemic situation. Um, you know, with COVID-19, it couldn't have happened at a better time to kind of push it. I think that, you know, if other lenders are currently not on it, um, definitely research on which e-close model works best for them. For example, you know, um, our, we mainly do hybrid e-close uh, because, uh, and I want to do full e-close, but we can't because some of our investors are not purchasing those type of loans. Um, and so really determine which, you know, e-close platform would work for you. Um, and also make sure to provide the proper tra training material for, for everyone, like for the, for the borrower, for, you know, the settlement agent, for your internal staff. It's really important that, you know, you have those um, training materials to help. Um, all those parties in case something happens because is is even though it's so easy it, it could you know I, I have experienced a lot of settlement agents not wanting to do it just because it's not something that they're familiar with you know they're they're familiar with just printing out the full docs getting it signed you know what if they have you know and you know a mobile notary they're not they just kind of want to get it out and done, even though the bar may have e like e-sign part of the package, they're just going to go ahead and send out the full package. So um, it's very important to kind of, um, you know, give those instructions to them. I think that on our retail channel, we have a better experience because we are working with the same settlement agents. You have that partnership. And so they understand what you need to get done. Um, so yeah, definitely, you know, analyze and figure out which would work in each, in each channel, each, each situation. 
that's um, that's a whole lot of things to, to consider, and I'm so glad that you're able to share that with us. Um, it kind of reminds me back when Trid rolled out, and you know, everybody was just kind of fly by the seat of their pants and try to figure it out. <laughs> the only difference is, is this is optional in a sense compared to Trid, where everybody had to adopt it, right? So, you know, everybody tried to find that normal. Um, and there was something I did skip over, Heather. Um, you know, you, you kind of told us that it was the, you wanted to improve the bar experience, which is part of the reason why you were implementing. Uh, can you give us a little bit more information on, on why you chose the route you guys did with DocuTech? Um, you know, I, I think you're asking as far as what, so DocuTech does um, offer different types of um, e-close solutions. Um, originally, when we first implemented uh, DocuTech, uh, we, we, we went with their Engage platform, which was the, which was the integration with LendingQB, uh, DocuTech, as well as Simplifile. Um, that model really didn't quite work with us. Um, like I said, because we are mainly wholesale and it was difficult to have those settlement agents um, kind of, you know, if, if it's just, a, it's pretty much a just a different you know platform that they have to log into learn how to use and if they're not working with you like all the time it made it difficult so um, we, we changed it and then we went to um, we decided to do, do the eclose express and that was just a pretty straightforward um, integration with you know mm -hmm. with their Solex and so it made it really easy um, to kind of to kind of get get that implemented implemented with Got it. Right. Awesome. Well, that's, that was, that's, uh, go ahead, Emily. I'm sorry. Heather brings up a really great point. You know, it's important that we, at DocuTech, we've always been very focused on making sure that we have a highly configurable solution uh, to meet the requirements of, of, of any lender's needs, really. Um, and one of the things that when we first rolled out with JMAC was that in the Simplify solution, they had to have a login, they had to have a username and password to be able to get in. Um, since then, we have implemented a streamlined access. Um, you saw that real quick in the demo. I know that was a quick demo where they just get an email link can click on that link and just go directly to the documents as well. Um, but to Heather's point, thank you, Heather, for bringing up Express. Uh, we do have a fully DocuTech hosted uh, closing room as well that's available. And that ended up being the best choice for JMAC um, and to support their, their business model. Um, and made it, it easier for the settlement agents and the multitude of settlement agents um, where you don't always work with the same, with the same teams uh, to be able to quickly access and get the same functionality that they need. And you know, both Heather and Brian made, made really good points about uh, when talking about the lessons learned it, with regards to having to reimagine the process and spend a lot of time thinking about all of the places where this introduces change. Um, I think both of them mentioned that it, how much change it introduces into the, the settlement agents world. Um, and then, you know, that's something that gets talked about quite a bit in the industry um, because they end up having, you know, they're, they have to be engaged with every one of these closings um, and they can either, you know, cause friction or they can help go through smoothly. We've certainly all, all learned a lot um, about how to increase and enhance and optimize the settlement agent adoption being a critical stakeholder in that process. Um, I know uh, being, being recently acquired by First American and becoming a First American process has certainly, or company has certainly given us insights into settlement agent adoption and, and ways that you can improve that. Um, so if, if either Brian or Heather wants to, to elaborate on that, I think that re reimagining the process internally and with each one of your stakeholders um, early in the process uh, certainly helps smooth that out. I know um, in, in both cases with Brian, uh, you know, with, with uh, Verity and with, with JMAC, you know, there's lessons learned along the way. And, and one of the things we wanted to do here was make sure that we share those lessons um, so that, that those who haven't adopted yet can really do those things in advance and, and speed their, their time to go live for eClose. Yeah, uh, I mean, that, those are all absolutely great points. And, you know, if, if in my former life when I was implementing new LOSs and, and doc vendors and things like that, those are the type of things I absolutely would have loved to have known going into it. Um, you know, we're, we're coming up close to the end of our time. I'd like to get to some Q&As. Um, we've got a question here. And, you know, this one's actually for you, Emily. Is, uh, is a separate contract needed with 
to have an account with Simplifile. No, it's not. Uh, this goes back to my comment of one contract, one contact, one, mm -hmm. one growth choke. Um, it's important to us to consistently source value added partners and integrations for our lenders so that they can minimize the number of vendors that they need to work with and contract with and manage with. Uh, you leave that up to us. You sign the contract with us. We, we have pass through reps and warrants. We manage the contracts. So no, you do not need to. Perfect. Awesome. That's really good to hear. And uh, this next question is actually kind of a two-parter for you and me here. Uh, but basically it was, if, if we don't, if we're not on LendingQB, you know, what is the implementation timeframe for both LendingQB and DocuTech if that's the direction we wanted to go? Um, so I'll, I'll, I'll tackle the LendingQB question. So we generally propose a rough 120 days implementation. Obviously there's certainly a ton of variables that go into that in terms of what your dedicated resource level looks like, um, you know, how fast are you looking to go? How much pipeline do you have to get through? Uh, so again, not an exact science, but you know, through the hundreds and hundreds of implementations that we've done now, uh, we have found that generally it ranges anywhere between 120 to 12 months, depending on you know what your pipeline looks like and how fast you want to go. Um, obviously, vendor partners do matter, and, and picking the right ones can help expedite that. So. That's a good segue for you. I'm like, kind of, what does that look like for us? Uh, thanks, Stephen. Um, we also have a plan on, uh, built uh, with key milestones on how you can achieve a go live within, within 120 days. We have a very detailed uh, built out project plan um, to add transparency so you can see where you would need to hit um, and also what resources you need to apply and at what time of the process do you need to apply them in order to hit that 120 day plan. Sure. Um, to your point, we do see some some in implementations extend longer than that, maybe the, you know, the six months or, or the 12 months. I usually joke when I talk with lenders that it's a three-legged race, right? Our legs tied together and I can run mm -hmm. as fast as you can and you can run as fast as I can. Here, it's, you know, when you're implementing both an, uh, an LOS and a doc vendor, it becomes then, I guess, a six-legged <laughs> race. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> We're tied to one leg, you're tied to the other. So. <laughs> right. Right. Um, so we, we can run, I like to say, we can run as fast as you can run and we can do it. You know, we've had a lot of lessons learned, a lot of these implementations we've done together to prep you ahead of time. So they have the right resources at the right time with the right milestones defined um, and good tracking in place to make sure that you can, can hit the timeline that you need to achieve. Absolutely. Thank you. That's, that's, a, that's an apt description of the three-legged race. So let, let's take that over to Brian and Heather. We got a question that just came in that, you know, what was your implementation time frame? you know, and did, did you guys kind of meet, exceed, or did you all kind of fall under what your expected implementation was? Um, well, for my side, actually, I, I want to say that DocuTech's implementation implementation team was really great. Um, I We were actually able to, once we decide what model worked for us, it took less than a month to kind of get up and running. Of course, I was talking about it with them forever, you know, and with Letty QB, um, because you guys were also, you know, um, finishing developing that portion on your side. So I think we were like kind of one of the first people to kind of test that out. So that took like a few months, but once we got once, you know, Lenny QB and DocuTech were set with that, um, to implement it, it was not long at all. It probably took us less than one month to do it. Right. Awesome. And that's a, that's a good point, Heather. That was for the eClose implementation when you were already on the LOS and the Doc Vendor. The eClose uh, implementations, especially for hybrid, can move very quickly. Correct. Yep. And Brian, kind of, you know, if you don't mind chiming in, you know, what was your implementation timeframe and did you meet or exceed your expectations? Uh, we, we actually kind of blew past it a little bit. Uh, again, it had to do with a lot of the customization that we want for all of our teams uh, and then our custom documents that we have. Um, I mean, DocuTech met the needs that we, that, we, um, that we required, but it was mainly on, I'll say our side, that we, you know, it took us a little bit longer than, than normal to, to get it going. That makes sense. Yeah. Well, listen, we're right at the 255. I know we, we've got a hard stop here. I want to thank all the panelists for being on the call. Thank you so much for your valuable insight. It's been absolutely fantastic. Tom, I'm going to toss this back over to you so you can take us home. I uh, appreciate it, Stephen. Well, first and foremost, thank you and uh, Emily for really guiding this discussion today. You guys were fantastic moderators. Truly appreciate the long-standing partnership between the Mortgage Collaborative and Lending QB as well as DocuTech, and so excited to see this integration take off and see our members, uh, you know, reap the benefits from it. And 
you know, got to thank both Heather and Brian again for your subject matter expertise uh, from the lender perspective as well and being great members of TMC as well. I uh, really appreciated your insights, and I thought this was a fantastic discussion. So kudos to, to all four of you. I wish this, we could carry this on longer. Thank you. Appreciate it. Awesome. Well, on that note, hope everybody enjoyed and have a great afternoon. Thank you. Thanks, Bye, Tom. everybody. Bye-bye.